when we were in chapter, chapter number nine, and we saw that the enemy loves to what? Come to kill, steal, and destroy. And this is a reason behind that because the enemy wants you not to be focused to live in the truth that God has for you in today. Come on, God has truth for you today, my friend. And we're going to pick up right now. Uh, we're going to pick up in Joshua 10 today. And today, family, I, I want to spend some time preaching or teaching. I would say preach. I, I'm trying to slow down and teach the text <laughs> and teach of what God is speaking today. I want to talk a lot about having God say, speak to him about crazy faith today. To, to have the the to have the uh the crazy faith, the the crazy prayers, to have those audacity, mm, there we go, audacity type of prayers. We always say this in, in celebration, do your prayers scare you? The, the, them the type of prayers that I want to pray this year. That when I begin, when it's coming out of my mouth, I I it just doesn't make sense, but I know my God can do it. See, see, my friend, if you if you if you're not daring to believe God for the impossible, you, you're sleeping through some of the best parts of your Christian life. God may may this be the year. Come on, family. Come on. I said I'm not going to preach it, but I, I think this is really going to be a prophetic word for somebody today, because maybe this year where it's going to be where my prayers get crazy before God. And if, if we can start to pray some, some audacity prayers and, and, and prayers that when you speak, you're like, man, this people are going to think I'm crazy. Yes, I'm crazy to think that my God can do the impossible. And if I'm crazy because I only know that my God can do this, anybody on the chat with me this morning, come on, then I guess I'll just be crazy. Because I believe my God can do the impossible. I believe that my God can still raise up dead things. I believe that my God can move in an incredible way. We believe that God can still blow our minds. If anybody on a call with me this morning that we are praying, I know we're in January and I know that we're fasting and praying, but we just believe if people think we're crazy, then let it so be. But we believe that God can do the impossible. And God is saying, let this be the year. Come on, let this be the year where you step away from the shore, step out into the deep with God and start praying some crazy prayers. Let your faith go crazy this year. Let your test God begin to release your voice and say, God, I know you can do it. When you're writing in your journal, come on, begin to write some things that just don't make sense to them, to the logic of man, but you know that only God can do it. God is a jealous God, and he loves to reserve a space just for him. And when this come to pass, come on, speak that to your life. Yeah, yeah, here we go. When this come to pass, people will know it wasn't man. When this come to pass, people going to know this was a move of God. When this come to pass, come on, can you receive that today? Begin to speak that into your life because when this come to pass, because here is my friend, oh, it's coming to pass that God healed me. Oh, yes, it's coming to pass that I'm moving in my right mind. Oh, oh yes, it's coming to pass that my business is going to be successful. Oh, yes, it's coming to pass that this relationship is going to be restored. Oh, yes, it's coming to pass that my, my, my kids are coming back to the Lord. Who am I preaching to on this call this morning? I'm trying to teach the text, but I can feel the anointing in here. And God is saying, open up your mouth and say, yes, it's going to come to pass. This is going to come to pass. Because yesterday, yesterday we, we spoke a lot about the Gibeonites. And today we're we're going to witness one of the one of the miracles in the Bible that still blows my mind. We're, we're going to read right here in Joshua 10. So if you have your Bibles, go ahead and flip to Joshua 10. Joshua 10 is where we're going to be. And this is it really blows my mind because the Israelites are now coming. They're, 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 they're coming to help the Gibeonites. And they're coming to help the Gibeonites because the other kings are joining forces forces to actually attack the Gibeonites. And then, and, and then eventually they're going to attack the Israelites. And this is powerful. This is powerful. Let, let me just give some context because we spoke a lot about the Gibeonites and their story, like their full story of how they came to the Lord, excuse me, on how they came to the Lord. And then God began to use them in a special way. And we begin to see the redemptive story. And this is how Jesus Christ is love. 
on how he redeems us. <clears throat> but the beautiful thing about um, the Gibeonites that 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 they didn't had they didn't come from a small village. No, this city was major, and not only was it was not only was it a large city, but also their men. They had men a warrior. It was warriors in this city. Oh, they were well taken care of. And they were well ready for battle. And here's what God is saying, that even the Gibeonites, <laughs> who were well established and they had, they were well defended, ready for warfare, they even knew, you know what, I'm not trying to mess with God and God's people. And I'm actually going to go come and join forces with them. And here's the beautiful thing. Can you receive this? People, God is getting ready to re release people in your life that doesn't even make sense. They're getting ready to serve you. <laughs> come on. They're getting ready to serve God because they can see the, the move of God that's getting ready to come your way. Can I just begin to speak a word to some business people right here? You're beginning to write strategies right now, and you don't even know where these grants are going to come from. You don't even know where these proposals are getting ready to come from. You're getting ready to sit inside of meetings like you have never seen set before and they're just going to come your way. I'm so crazy to believe that God can work miracles that I, that we can be inside of board meetings that we don't even belong and somehow the very thing that was against us, come on somebody somehow the very thing that was attacking us is now serving us. This is the word of God when it says the last, come on somebody shall be first. Can somebody receive that word today? I know you're on your job right now. I know you're feeling like you're being attacked and God is saying, I'm getting ready to flip the, script, flip, flip the script. Come on, receive that. Say it right now. Put it in the chat. If you can help me out, preach this word. Flip the script. I know you're being attacked. Um, and the other kings, let me give context. We're going to get to the text. We're going to get to the text. And let me give some more context. The other kings are, are joining alliance <laughs> so that they can go attack the Gibeonites and they can go attack the Israelites. So, so they are joining forces because they, they came to the understanding that we cannot stop this move of God by ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, receive that. Speak that into your own life. I am a move of God. I am a move of light. I am empowering something. I am influential. Come on. I am an impact. I'm impactful. Come on. And when the enemy sees that you are moving forward in progression, he has to join forces <laughs> with other things. So you wonder why you're pressed on both sides. It's because you're moving forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You wonder why that you're catching a blow from over here. You're catching a blow from over there. You're catching a blow from there. You got a blow coming from the back. It's coming from everywhere, God. Your turn is like, yeah, it's almost like 2023. My God. It felt like you were in the matrix. I don't know why that's dropping in my spirit right now. You just been trying to dodge bullets. They they just coming from everywhere. One get coming this way. Woo, I'm swinging this way. Another one coming that way. I'm swinging this way. And that's been the life for 2023 for a lot of us. You've been felt like you've been living in the movie of the matrix and you having winds of the enemy coming from both sides. And God is saying this. They're joining forces because you're a threat. Mm. They're joining forces because you're a move of God. They're joining forces because you're rolling and you see it as warfare, but God sees it as you're being victorious. And this is where we get stuck in our mind because we, we feel the oppression of the warfare and sometimes the warfare can feel like defeat. No, you're in the middle of it because, because the enemy is trying to stop you. But you're moving forward, my friend. And then and now they're they're getting ready. Let me take you back to the context of the story in Joshua 10. Because we're gonna we're gonna get to this text because I want to teach it some some more. Because now the Gibeonites are getting ready to be in a war, a fight with the other kings because they decided not to join forces with them. And now here's a Gibeonites, they're calling for help. Come and save us, Joshua. Come on, we need your help. They, they, they're coming. And we're, we're going to pick up right here in Joshua 10, 8. And if you have, I'm going to read from the CSB, Joshua 10, 8, from the CSB. And it says this, it says, the Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid of them. Yeah, for I have handed them over to you. Not one of them will be able 
to stand against you. My God, not one of them. Underline that. Yeah, yeah. Not one of them. Come on. Come on. Not, 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 not one of them. Come on. Yeah. Underline that. God is speaking to somebody. Not, 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 not one of them. Yeah, I know they're joining forces to bring you down, but but not one of them. Come on. When you are blessed, the enemy will have people hating on you for no reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not, not one of them. Come on, come on. They don't hate you. The word tells us right here, they are actually afraid of you. They are afraid of you because of the God that's inside of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And God is saying they're joining forces because they're afraid of the move of God. And when you have this, when you have power coming from both sides, they have to join forces. They have to join forces. And God tells Joshua here, he gives them reassurance, not one of them. Receive that today, my friend. Yeah, not stress. Yeah, stress won't bring me down. No, no, no. Not health issues. No, health issues not going to bring me down. Come on. Not money issues. No, not one of them. Not relationship issues. Come on. Not, not issues from the past. Come on. Underline that. I, I can't let this go. Somebody needs to receive this this morning because God is telling you, my friend, he's whispering to you. He's trying to reconfirm some things in your spirit. Not one of them. Yeah. 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 Not one of them. I know you have a whole list of things that's trying to bring you down, that's trying to defeat you. But God is saying, I know you see the list, but do you hear my word? I know you see the attack, but do you feel my presence? I know you're being pushed on both sides, but do you see that I'm here to cover you? Do you hear to see that I'm getting, getting ready to protect you? Not one of them, not one of them, not one of them is going to hurt you or bring you down. Hey, family, let us not look at the problem too long when we miss the promise, sir. Let, let, let us not be distracted from, from, from keeping our eyes on the problem and we miss hearing what the, pro, what the problem solver is, is speaking. The problem solver is speaking, hey, not one of them. And then he goes into Joshua 10, 9, the next verse in 9. It, it says, so Joshua caught them by surprise. After marching all night from Gilgal, yeah, caught them by surprise. Joshua was walking all night and caught them by surprise. See, when the enemy underestimates you, it, you come on, you should have took me out, but I'm come when I'm working all night. Yeah, I'm marching my way to, in, into your camp. I'm, I'm when you sleeping, come on, I'm working. Come on. That, that, that's what my old football coach used to say. When the opponent's sleeping, Anthony, come on, I'm working. Come on, I'm, I'm studying. Come on, I'm researching. Come on. I want every single age. And here's Joshua. I'm speaking some strategy to somebody right now. It says that Joshua was marching all night. And you, my friend, you're in a marching season. Yeah. Yeah, I come to morning this morning. I'm trying to teach the text, but I, I just feel that God needs God, God is saying, preach that thing right to their heart because you're in a marching season. You're in a marching season in the night hour. Yeah. You're in a marching season at nighttime. It's dark outside. It's cold, but you're marching, my friend. And, and you're getting ready to attack the enemy in a different way. The enemy thinks you're coming in the morning. No, 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 my friend. You're coming at nighttime when you're praying, when you're interceding, when you're writing a vision, when, 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 when you think you're getting ready to be defeated. God says, keep marching. Keep marching. Come on. March by faith. Come on. Come on, keep marching. March with vision. Yeah. Come on, keep marching. Keep marching. Keep marching. March with the word. Yeah. March with crazy prayers. Yeah. Come on, march with, with, with some crazy people. My God, yeah, I, I felt that. Come on, don't just march with crazy prayers because that's what we're talking about. But my, 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 my God, join forces with some people that can be crazy just with you. <laughs> and begin to march. Come on, celebration. Come on. I, I believe I'm part of a church that loves to praise God, that loves to release crazy prayers, but I'm not marching by myself this morning. I'm marching with some crazy people who are marching in the night hour and we're coming after the enemy. We're going after everything that he stole from us. Maybe he's been stealing your joy. Maybe he's been stealing your peace. Maybe he's been stealing your happiness. I, I don't know what the enemy has been attacking you with, but hear, my hear me today, my friend. 
Keep marching. Keep marching. Keep marching. Come on. Come on. Come on. Keep marching. Somebody needs to receive this. I keep March, I, I know you're I know you're on the brink of giving up, but don't stop marching. Don't stop praying. D don't stop believing. Keep marching. Here's Joshua in the night hour. The scriptures tells him that he marched all night. All night. All night. Don't stop till you get there. Don't, don't, that's the strategy. That's the obedience here. That, that you got to keep marching. What does marching look like for you in this season of your life? What, 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 where is the enemy is, is causing you to say, hey, you need to give up on that. You, 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 don't, you don't actually need to go that way. See, the enemy, we, we talked about this yesterday, that the enemy is trying to deceive us with deception. He's trying to trick our mind. Did God really say that? When, when, when the enemy slides in as a cunning snake, the scripture tells us he dropped these, these curiosities in, in, in our spirit, but it's really deception. D did God really say that? That's to keep you from marching. That's to keep you from believing God's promise. That's to keep you from taking the time and stopping when you should be marching and trusting God. See the beautiful thing about the beautiful thing about the scriptures. God says He will He will be the light upon our path. He's not going to show you the full light at the end of the tunnel, but His promise is here that He will show you the light of right where you at and every next step. Keep walking with Him. Every next step, He's going to show you where to step. Every next step, He's going to show you where to turn. I believe God is releasing some revelation in your life right now of the direction of where you need to go. And I'm speaking a word to your mind, to your soul, and to your spirit. Keep marching. And so we, we're, we're right here in Joshua 10, 9. And now the Israelites are in battle. They're in battle right now. And, and right from the beginning, we, we can read, if you begin to go, if you, you want to take some time, begin to, to read through. I'm, I'm skipping down a little bit just for time's sake. But the battle is going well. They're, they're handling their business. The battle is going well. And when we get down to verse 12, this is where this is what we're talking about today. When we get down to verse 12, we see the sun is getting ready to go down. So Joshua faces a big decision because the victory isn't complete. God, God said, hey, wipe them all out. None of them will be able to stand against you. So now the sun is going down. And if you if you read the text before, you're, you're very familiar with it. The victory isn't complete, and once it gets dark, the rest of the kings can be eventually slip away. So, so Joshua, come on, Joshua prays a crazy prayer in verse 13. Joshua prayed something. He, he prayed this, if I can read it. Sun, stand still over Gibeon, and moon over the valley of Ajalon. And the sun stood still and the moon stopped, watch this, until the nation took vengeance on its enemy. Joshua had the audacity. My God, I'm still blown by this. Joshua had the audacity to ask God to make the sun stop so he can freeze it on the behalf of his people. And God actually gives Joshua exactly what he asked for. And I'm not even, even sure how this makes sense. <laughs> I'm not even, I can't even get my mind there yet. I'm more thrilled about even Joshua having the audacity to pray a crazy prayer. Yeah. See, sometimes we can get caught up. Oh, right, how, how did God do this? And is that true? And no, focus in on Joshua. Having that type of faith, my God, let me lean into this. Because our logic can get caught up in so many things trying to connect the X's and the O's and cross the T's and cross the I's. And we miss the man of God having some crazy type of faith to trust God in something that's so unordinary. See, while you're trying to make logic make sense, God is saying, all I need is just your faith. 
All I need is some crazy faith. While you're trying to make the strategy make sense to man's logic and, 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 and line up with this and line up with that, can you just pray something crazy today? This is Joshua here praying a crazy prayer. I just wonder, my friend, I, I just wonder, is there something that seems impossible in your life? Is there something, but... But 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 would you like to see God do through you? What, what is it that you would love to see God do through you? There we go. What's the impossible that's in your life? There's nothing our world needs more desperately right now, family, is for God's people to begin to open up their mouth and pray some crazy prayers. Come on, there, there, there's individuals that need you to pray some crazy prayers. There's families, there's businesses, there's churches, there's communities, the society that we live in, we need God to move in a saving supernatural act. And God has said, I'm waiting for heaven is ready, but I'm waiting for earth to release their voice. And God is saying, will you trust me in the impossible reign? Will you step into that arena where it gets into the impossible and trust me and begin to release your mouth? See, God is ready to act when we are bold enough to ask God about it. Come on, all right, come on, just begin to pray something. What? Begin to write in your journal, because while we are waiting, let me say it this way, and this is where we're going to camp out at, because while, while we are waiting for God to do the extraordinary, let's give God some ordinary obedience. There we go. Come on. Uh, there you go. Come on, let me say it again. Let me say it again. Because this is where we're going to camp out at. And this is what crazy faith and crazy prayers is all about. While we are waiting for God to do the extraordinary, the, the impossible, because we're all in a season of some kind of a sort of waiting for God to move in a supernatural way. But let us not just wait any kind of way. Let's give God some ordinary obedience. Mm. I'm being reminded, Pastor Chris in our staff chapel um, yesterday on Thursday, every Thursday we pray over the church and pray over the, the coming Sunday service and pray over our church family. We do this every Thursday. Pastor Chris prayed a beautiful prayer. And I'm being reminded one of the things that he said, I had to write it in my notes. He said, obedience is the love language that God loves. Yeah, come on. I don't know what your love language is. Maybe you read the five, the, the book with the five love language, but I do know what God love language is, and it's obedience. Obedience is God's love language. See, when we begin to strip back all of the spectacular miracles in the Bible, they always begin with ordinary acts of obedience. See, the promise is a beautiful thing, but God wants to prep you for the promise. Yeah. And God is getting ready to send you. God is getting ready to release you. God is getting ready to do some extraordinary things in your life in this year. But God is setting you up in a season because I told you you're marching for it. And could it be that your marching is part of your obedience? Could, could it be that God is setting you up and he's preparing you for such a time, such a time as this and what's getting ready to come in the future? But could it be that God is looking at your obedience? And when we strip back all of it, so write this down in your notes, because this is what I put down. My first point is this. Excuse me. My first point is this. Remember that the extraordinary displays of God's power often follow the humble acts of obedience. Let me say, let me say that again. I know it's a long one this morning. <laughs> Remember that the extraordinary displays of God's power often follow the humble acts of obedience. See, we, we, we love the extraordinary acts. We love to see God's power. We love to see God moves in our life. But God needs something to move on. And God loves to move on obedience. He loves that marriage. He loves when those two come together. And what, so what are the simple acts of obedience that you can give God in this season? I, I'm not talking about major, I'm not talking major acts of obedience. I'm talking about the simple. It's the simple acts of obedience that keep us in the right direction. What, what are the simple things? I'm not, I'm not even going to name it. I, I want you to spend some time today chewing on it. Maybe you got a snow day. Go right today, God, with some simple acts. 
some simple acts that you've been calling me to. Maybe this fast is helping you have simple acts of obedience. Simple acts of obedience in the same direction leads to extraordinary displays of God's power in your life. God is just looking for simple. Keep it simple. God is looking for simple. And my second point is this. My second point is this. Crazy miracles are the offspring of crazy faith. Yeah, 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 yeah. I read that in a book a long time ago. God is he be bringing these quotes back in my head. <laughs> crazy miracles are the offspring of crazy faith. My God, I received that today. Crazy miracles are the offspring of crazy faith. Because here, here, here's why. Here's why. And I'm, I'm going to camp out here and begin to open up the room. Normal will give birth to normal. Crazy will give birth to cr something crazy. If you are ready for God to do some, some crazy miracles in your life, sometimes we need to pray crazy prayers. If you need God to do an impossible in your life, it's time to pray something that's very impossible. If you want God to do something normal, then we can just keep it normal. We can just play it safe. We, we, we can just stay right on the shore and kick our feet and live the rest of, rest of our life. And I believe this, my friend. I, I, I believe this, that God has more for you. God wants, God has a desire to give you better. And, and, and God ha is not setting you up just to live a life to survive. God is setting you up through preparation to live a life so that you can thrive. And these acts of obedience is preparing you for where God is getting ready to take you. But in order for you to stay there and sustain that, he has to get your character right. Come on. He has to get your resources right. He has to get your obedience towards him right. Can I say it this way? He has to get your finance. He has to get your pockets right. And this is why you got to steward your finances better. Because if God is going to take you, come on, he can get you in the room. But is he going to be able to keep you in the room if your character is not right? If what's coming out of your mouth is not right? If your attitude is not right? If you're walking in pride, come on, you're not going to be, be able to sustain and stay in the destiny if you're not ready to actually live in it. God just doesn't want you to visit it. He wants you to live in it. Come on. He told the Israelites even back, come on, to go settle in. He didn't say grab, he didn't say grab a, a passport and just go visit and then go back to the wilderness. No, no, no. He said go settle in. In other words, settle in because you're getting ready to stay there. And I speak that over your life right now that where God is taking you, he wants you to settle in. And the only way to settle in, we have to make sure that we're aligning up our obedience according to his plan, according to his purpose not our pride, not our preferences. And I believe, family, we're marching forward. I believe, family, you're marching forward. So hear me today. Hear me, hear me today as I get ready to close out, continue to march forward. Don't quit. Like I said it earlier, come on. Not one of them will be able to stand against you. Go speak that to yourself today. Go pray that out today. Come on, say it with your chest. Come on, I know it's early in the morning for our 7 8 crew, and maybe for the rest that's watching it later online. Come on, stand in the mirror and say, you know what? Not one of them, God. Not one of them. Not one of them. Not, not this year. No, no, no. We're marching forward, and we're going to release our voice, and we're going to pray some crazy prayers because we have some crazy faith.